On to the main show real quick. Uh, now, we, this is what we actually started watching. So we had the, the flippy shit of the evening. We had El Hijo de Vikingo going up against El Commander for a triple A mega campeonato, you know. And, uh, yeah, pretty intense match. Lots of cool flippy shit, as you would expect. It, it was a good opener. I did notice it was a little slow pace than I was expecting, but I think it was kind of maybe because it was like the opening match and let's get everyone kind of whatever, like, like maybe near the end it got kind of insane, but I didn't see like, you know, it wasn't like full speed ahead, like Lucha Bros versus Young Bucks, <laughs> kind of like that. You know what I mean? Mm. It was it was, a, it was a bit more slower pace and everything, but um, yeah, it was a pretty good match. I was entertained, and Commander is pretty awesome. Walking the yeah. tightrope and all that. Yeah, come on, the Commander and Commanders. Uh, one of those guys. I I really up until this past week, I really barely knew who he was i heard of him but lv kingo is legitimately i'm not not even exaggerating when i say this he is probably one of the best lucha libres on the planet right now he's probably the best to be 100 percent honest with you because he is so like crazy good and considering the dude like just turned 25 damn that's like like he if he keeps up with what he's doing i could legitimately see him like being one of those guys who you could just like put like in any wrestling company and just you know rock it to his he's already got a rocket to his back just like here you go <laughs> i i would love it for him to sign with like um i know he signed with triple a i mean he's the triple a champion but I would love to see him, like, you know, maybe take a stint in, um, you know, just do a couple runs in Impact, especially with their X Division would be kind of cool. Or, like, you know, maybe AEW, have him, couple, have him wrestle a couple other people. Uh, I could see, a, like, him versus Phoenix. He had a cool match with uh, Guevara recently. Yeah, see, yeah, him and him and Guevara, that would be pretty cool. Like, uh, they've fought him before. So, I'm like, I, I see, like, Vikingo as being one of those guys who you could just see... Like just, just you see, he's already showing his ability. Now it's only a matter like of world recognition in in a short period of time. So I'm happy Vikingo is just finally getting the re recognition he deserves. Yeah, I totally gotta agree with uh, Jack Knives on there. Uh, it is about time that he got the recognition he deserves. Now. Here would be my dream match. Could you imagine him going in New Japan and going against Will Ospreay? Oh, God. Oh, man. That would be insane. the sickest match I would oh. ever see in my whole life. I wouldn't I be think... able to keep up. <laughs> but I, I think like, I would way love better to see... than Orange Cassidy. I think even either, him, yeah, him versus, even him versus Time Bomb would be freaking awesome. Oh, God, that's a good one. Or him versus but... Leo Rush. There's so many people I could see him fighting. Yeah. Or like him, if, dear God, if he ever goes into sports entertainment, have him go up against Ricochet. Well, it's funny you say that because his finisher is Ricochet's. The 630 is Ricochet's finisher. 630, yep. <laughs> but you, were, but oddly enough, yeah, the match did start off a little slow paced. Mm -hmm. I guess it was because it was like an opening match. So, you know, you kind of got to get that pace kind of built up. I but honestly, if it would have been later on in the card, I think it would have been full flash, balls to the walls, just insane. I think I can actually explain why it was slower paced. <laughs> so both Commander, both Commander and uh, um, Vikingo actually fought the night before at that super show. And then oh, I guess hmm. they did another show. So they had already fought in two matches the day prior. So they were probably like, so exhausted because the first time the last time they fought when he defended the triple a title which was at that super show i was telling you about that match went on for like almost 26 minutes so that was like a long oh. match so i think he was kind of like okay i gotta get in the ring let me pace myself and i'm like fair enough <laughs> and then he had to get the groove in it you know okay look at it that way that makes a lot more sense yeah i think that's what it was yeah 
Well, well, I have nothing now because I was about to say the same thing. I thought the match started off a little slow, and then the Gino got <laughs> it sped up a bit. But he, I don't really have much to say about it. It was, you know, it was entertaining. It kept me entertained, you know. And there was flippy shit, <laughs> a little bit, a little flippy shit. So you know, and usually with all the flippy shit, I, I forget who's supposed to be who's doing what. So. That always, it's always hard for me to keep up with stuff like that. Like, sorry for it, but I don't have the I don't know. I don't know if I just don't have the brain for it or what, or my eyes just don't work right, or my glasses were just always dirty anyway. So I promise when I drive, I will have them cleaned. Put it. <laughs> okay, Johnny, my man. What did you think? Um, I'm going to go pretty much with the same opinion with you guys. I mean, I guess the match was a little slow. I mean, I still saw it as a very action-packed match. I think it was a good first match. Like, it's a good warm-up. And, you know, um, it's actually the first time I've seen um, a Vikingo and Commander. And so far, from what I've seen, I like what I see. Like, they're both very uh, phenomenal wrestlers, and I can see why... You know, they're the, you know, they're big at the free play out wrestling. Like, just seeing them, like, for the first time. I'm like, oh, okay, I can see why they're at where they're at. And it's cool that um, the Kingo won this match. And, he's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, it'd be great to see him fight more and more, to be honest. You know, given Vikingo of age, I think, I hope that, you know, you know, with all the stuff that he's doing, that he doesn't, like, damage his body where he'll be forced to not wrestle anymore for a while. Because that's mm -hmm. the only downside with, like, the high flyers and all of them, that, you know, it's a higher probability that you'll get a bad injury. Yeah. So here's hoping. He's just 25. I want him to, you know, have a nice full career ahead of him. I don't want to have him to have to end it short. So I'd like to witness more by him because this is my introduction to him. Well, my, you know, w without the other magic he had already done a, few, well, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So right now we've got um, all four of us went for Hijo del Vikingo. So we're all in a tie right here between me, Johnny, Wendy, and William. So uh, let's see here. The next match here is um, the Embassy because they found out that Jupy was watching. So to keep Jupy entertained, we got uh, Brian Cage, Khan, and Toa Leona with Prince Nana Loitering going up against Blake Christian, Metallic, and A.R. Fox. And um, six-man tag team match for the Ring of Honor World Six-Man Tag Team Championship, which, of course, the embassy currently is. And, um, yeah, pretty good match. Um, this one gave a chance, all three of them, to uh, Khan and Toa to drop what they got. Of course, Brian Cage is probably a person you don't want to jump too much to because he'll, he'll catch you and slam your ass. And yeah, if, that bass so cool. Um, okay. Oh, I love it. Okay, down, Wendy, down. Uh, <laughs> and we got the, uh, you know, Ari Fox brings some flippy shit. Everyone loves him. Everyone loves Mentality. Christian did a good job and stuff. But uh, in the end, Embassy reigns supreme. They are still the six-man tag team champ. So that's pretty awesome. Every time I see A.R. Fox and he loses, I just want to put the sound effect from Star Fox of Slippy when you die. Go, Fox! <laughs> I can't be the only. Come on, tell get me out of my head, Jack. Get out of my head. <laughs> no, no, no. See, my problem. No, my only problem with that is to this day, I don't know how they had that deep voice for his character, kind of slightly deep voice for the original Star Fox. Then you get Star Fox 64. Oh, Fox, be my friend. I like you, Fox. Yay! <laughs> I mean, oh, I hate it. <laughs> Well, it's that, and every time that he does, like, any time that Fox does a backflip, um, I literally want to just hear somebody just go, do a barrel roll! And, like, oh, okay, yeah. that, 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 that I would lose it. Off in my I head. would lose like, my oh, mind. <laughs> but, otherwise, it was a, it was a really, it was a decent match. Uh, had a good pacing to it. Uh, Brian Cage, ripping people to shreds, as usual. <laughs> I don't see why he's not higher on the card than he is, but he should be. 
It is what it is. But otherwise, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you already know my opinion. But anyway, aside from that, so just gonna just get off this for just a moment. So I heard that Brian Cage's contract was up. Ashley, Ashley, like right after that or something. But he had promised to work. He's like not on a contract or something right now. It's a free agent. Because the contract was up or something by that time after the pay per view or something. But it was just kind of odd because they have him holding the title, but you know, you know the um title, but he doesn't have a contract or whatever. So I just find that a little interesting. Or is he still negotiating his contract? So it's it's going off of the Brock Lesnar pinky swear mode of contract writing, where um basically they go, hey. We know your contract's up, and you're the world champion. You prinky promise you're going to defend it? And we're like, yeah. And then he'll be in, like, New York, like, lol, fuck you. (laughs) Well, to be fair, Cage did have a match like this recent Ring of Honor, so Mm. at least he's he's still doing something. But who knows where that, because these are pre-taped, so who knows how those go, but... Who no, knows? That's what, yeah, that's what I meant by that. And I was thinking about that because it says, so technically he's still off of a contract. So he's like, he's just saying that, oh yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. I'll, you know, I'll continue to, you know, defend it or help you out or whatever. But he is technically a free agent. So, right. but I just think it's kind of crazy. He's a free agent with a title. And then just keep thinking about the WWF situation. <laughs> You know, where, you know, Vince will go out of his way not to let that happen. Montreal. <clears throat> Sorry. I heard that's in case. It seems like the only people who know what the hell to do with him are, weirdly enough, Impact. It's mm-hmm. kind of funny because they're literally the only ones who know what the hell to do with him. Yeah. So him as a free agent with a title right now spells Danger. Mm-hmm. Especially as underrated as they've made him in AEW and Ring of Honor. No, this this if it's a good thing Brian Cage is is being a good guy with this because otherwise it would not end well. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I do think Tony Khan doesn't want to rage against the machine. <laughs> Any Come on. Time? It's too, it's right there. I had to. I'm, it's too obvious. I have to say, Jack, I do appreciate that. You know, I really do appreciate that because that is corny as hell. And I really have a lot of respect for corniness. Well, that, and, and, and that was the, reason, the reason that Brian Cage is still wrestling is because Tony Khan challenged him that despite his contract being up, to beat him in a staring contest. And if he loses, <laughs> he'll still wrestle a few extra weeks. Did we all know how that went? I'm happy, oh. you guys. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> oh god, that makes me. I mean, my, it's like so. So Tony Khan is grumpy as hell, and I'm so happy. You know. <laughs> I have to do. I have a new act. You're asking to do wrestler to act like roster. I How is so it that Tony buying new wrestlers for my collection, Steve? To- <laughs> Tony Khan's excited face has the combination of a guy who's high as hell and a guy who's also ha- who also has his family held at gunpoint off camera at the same time. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but he always is like, "I swear, I uh, I can't wait to announce." <laughs> like, oh my god, is he okay? Like, Any dogs Put the gun down, down punk! <laughs> Put the gun down! Here, have you a muffin! Do you need a muffin, punk? Do you need another muffin? Do you need Put another the muffin? muffin down! Oh god, put the muffin down! Now! <laughs> put the muffin down now! <laughs> you got any thoughts, Johnny? Um... To me, I felt like the match went real quick. I just don't really remember too much what happened, but, you know, there was a lot of flip shit with AR Fox, and, you know, you have the powerhouse, um, Brian Cage picking people up and throwing them around. Whatever. <laughs> that will always sound funny. But, you know, the match was so good. It's just I just don't really have, like, a super clear memory 
play by play what happened throughout the whole match, but it was still a decent match. Like just to watch it as an entertainment, I thought it was good. Oh, Johnny, did you get to see the whole thing after all with the app acting up or? It keeps turning off, so I had to go back and watch it. Like, no, I mean, but yeah, did you watch it fine yesterday or, or no? No, it did that the whole time. Like, yeah, still. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> so basically, today before we started the podcast, is that I uh uninstalled the app and then reinstalled it again. So hopefully, by doing that glitch hopefully it'll work because sometimes it does happen that sometimes the apps act kind of funky and then you, you know you just have to uninstall it and reinstall it and hopefully that it'll work like how it's supposed to work <laughs> i mean i support the feature report app just because it has the matches but when i first heard like you know way back then hey w has the feature report app i'm like why did you just choose spike tv it, it, it's like you know reliable and never Crap's out or nothing. You could have just gone there, but and not only that, but it's a bit you know, for you guys got consoles, it's available on every console. While with the uh, Bleacher Report, you have to have a PS4 slash five. It doesn't work on the Switch or whatever. Like like, you know, if for those have a Switch or an Xbox or you know what I mean? Mm. And just like how they do internationally, I think they should give you the option that okay, if you don't want to use Okay, say that they still have it on Bleacher Report, but you're still given the option to still watch it on Fight TV. We want to like give it, give it a, yeah. give it an option. Like, hey, if you don't want to watch it on Bleacher's Report, you could buy the pay per view on Fight TV or. Whatever. Yeah, what pisses me off is that too. Like, if it's not available on Fight TV, then it's not available on Fight TV. Don't make it that it's available on Fight TV, but if you're in some other country. Not while you're in America. The, the, the fuck is that shit? And I know why they're doing. It. They're doing it because. They want to bring money to the Bleacher Report app. It's like there's no choice. You know, you want to watch it and stuff. Got to watch Bleacher Report app. Good. You know, like like they're trying to get you there. But like, it's also because Bleacher Report like doesn't make as much revenue even close to Fight TV because Fight TV makes they Fight TV gets money from UFC, all these other indie promotions of wrestling um like international stuff like they got everything like ever like new japan does stuff with them uh new japan impact uh all these different things i i don't know i agree it, it's it's so stupid that they have an exclusive i think they do have an exclusive contract with blue bleacher which is so stupid because it's like other than aew the only other crap they have is boxing like who cares yeah, and boxing then, fans. Like, and then, like, <laughs> yeah, we could watch it on UFC on Fight TV too, most likely. But it's like mm. even even now that Ring of Honor is back, I feel it's kind of stupid to have to like watch it there instead of on um, the you know Honor Club. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I thought that was kind of nutty. Yeah. Well, anyways, um, so for that one, let me just double check. I'm pretty sure we all went with the embassy. Well, you know, I did. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So we all went for the embassy. So that means that we're all winning. This is going to be a very close one because I don't remember any, you know, us really diverging too much. So there's going to be a close one. I, I guess we're all going to have uh, shirts. So next match we got here for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship: Athena versus Yuka Sakasaki. And um, yeah, it's a pretty intense match. I was honestly surprised that Yuka really brought the offensive towards, you know, Athena because she does act all cutesy wootsy and happy, happy, cheery, whatever. But it's like her face got happy, serious happy, during joy, this match. Joy. What now? Happy, happy, joy, joy. Yes, yes, yes. So anyways, um, yeah, you know, I, I think it did start out with Athena slapping around, throwing around, that kind of shit. But Yuka did bring the fight to her. And yeah, it was a pretty good fight. It was pretty close and intense. And... Like I like I said, I really didn't see Yuka like going over. I mean, they did they did have a couple of convincing fake outs where you thought she was really gonna pin her and win, but no, Athena still retained. But one thing I do want to say was last night's episode of Ring of Honor. Holy shit, Athena versus Miyu Yamashita. Oh god, dude, that match not only was it the main event, which uh <clears throat> Jupy slept through, um, but that <laughs> match was Sorry. so intense. I was like, dude, why wasn't this on the pay-per-view? This match was 10 times more intense than the Yuka one, and Yuka one was on the pay-per-view, no offense to Yuka, of course, and and 
this was on the just a regular episode of, of Ring of Honor. And Miu just just she brought the offense, man. She brought the kick. She brought the, the thing. She had her chance to now throw Athena up against the steel steps and fuck her up and everything. It, it was it was real close. It was the kind of match that even though Athena won, Athena could barely fucking stand after she won and everything. That was I, I just kept thinking, wow, this one blew the other one away. Like Miu Yamashita is legitimately one of the few women in Tokyo Joshi Pro who are legitimately like fantastic wrestlers. And the reason I say that is say it like so with stardom, stardom is more focused on the athletics and the wrestling. Tokyo Joshi Pro is a little more on the entertainment side. Um, but there are a couple of major standouts, one of them being Yuka Sakazaki, another one, but the the goat or the ace of Tokyo Joshi Pro, as she's actually known, is Miyu Yamashita. She is a freaking dynamo in this in the ring. Like she just just that weekend, no joke. If you think about it, just that week, she went, she debuted at Ring of AEW. She debuted at day AEW. She she showed up she wrestled the first ever tokyo joshi show in america uh, in at la she debuted for ring of honor she debuted for impact so she debuted for three separate organizations and had a tokyo joshi show and had a wrestlecon like signature thing all in the same week i'm like my god this girl uh, how does she have the energy for this crap lots of red i know how i know how Hmm. She's Japanese. That's all. That's the only reason she is Japanese. That's true. Um, I have nothing actually. That's what I'm going with. I, I love. I love. I love Miyu Yamashita. I also love Yuka Sakazaki. She's she's a good balance between cute and like her style is high speed wrestling is very very entertaining and she's got a lot of talent. I also you guys all know how much i love athena i've loved her from day one back when she was before she was ember moon um so i was happy with this match this is one of the few matches i was like super 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 looking forward to it's actually the second match i was absolutely 100 percent looking forward to well i'm sorry there was three matches i was like yeah this was uh number three on that list was this match um but i wasn't disappointed i was very happy with it um, I love that Yuka got to show off her talents and I love that Athena was able to step up to her because her style isn't really known for her speed. It's more for her technical ability, but she did show that, you know, hey, I'm the Ring of Honor women's champion for a reason and I'm happy that she retained too. Yeah, actually it was a pretty solid match. Um, Yuka Sakazaki was actually kind of bringing it to her for a little while. I was, I was actually really surprised. But, you know, again, I was also surprised with Athena because Athena's not really one of the speed type fighters. And she actually kept up with her and took it down. Like, this was one of those matches to where if either one of them had won, I would have not been mad at all. Like, to both their credits, they are both amazing. But to see them actually bring out skills in each other that neither I haven't seen before in either of them. You know, that was actually quite tremendous. It was a really good match. I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Okay. Yes, it was a good match. I really did enjoy it. I like, and, you know, like you guys were saying, you know, like Athena, like, you know, she's more technical. She's a little slower, you know, in the ring compared to her. And even in this type of situation, I had a feeling that Athena was going to retain it anyway because, I don't know. I just see. I could just see her having fused some more people before she finally has to drop the belt to someone. But yeah, it was a pretty good match. It was, you know, it was nice, nicely paced. It was all good. And Mark, I have to say something to you. If I ever do off during a really good match, you fell asleep too. Um, if I ever fall asleep during a really good match. You will just just say, Wendy, wake up. Look, look, look at the Athena match is the one I really wanted to see. 
That is the one I really, really wanted to see compared to the other matches on um on uh, Ring of Honor on Thursday. Yeah, but I mean, you, you can always watch it on demand, you know. Well, I know, but I like to watch it in the moment and have someone to react off of. Yeah. It's more fun. It's more fun that way. See, Jack understands, right? See, he understands, and I probably should have woke you up for some yeah. other matches, too, and I'm guilty, too. But, yeah, you know, that's the that's that's one that I care to see, to be honest. It's like, going to exactly. see a, it's like going to see a movie. It's better when there's, like, multiple, when there's kind of, like, all a shared collective experience. I get it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, but Mark, you got to say something to get her attention, to get her to wake up, because, like, she might still be asleep if you go... Oh God! Look, it's Brian Cage in a thong bikini. She'll pop up like the Undertaker. <laughs> oh my God! Brian Cage had a mal- wardrobe malfunction. Whoa. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Wait! What? 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 Oh, all they gotta say, like, holding up, like, oh no, Brian Cage had a wardrobe mal- malfunction. How the hell does all that fit in his trunks? <laughs> hey! <I'm sorry>. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your glasses will fly off. <laughs> No, I'm serious at a theater match. I wish you would have just been like, Wendy, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. I know you woke up at like five o'clock in the morning, but wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Your thoughts, Johnny? Uh, this was actually, in my opinion, this was actually one of my favorite matches on this uh, pay-per-view other than the uh, main events. Uh because you know Athena, we all know her style. Her style is just like very. She's been very heelish lately, and she's just very aggressive and just more like the aggressive type. And Yuka's much more like the technical type. Now, this is the first time I've actually seen Yuka Sakasaki fight in this match, and so far, what I've seen, I like what I see. Um, I like her character. You know cutesy and all that stuff with the music and all that kind of stuff. But when, when she's, you know, ready to fight in that bi- battle, she really, you know, she's going to take it seriously. And there were moments that I was actually um, rooting for Yuka. I, I actually wanted her to win the match at certain times. Because uh, we already know Athena's a great wrestler on her own. But, you know, Yuka, you know, because they really stood much behind either. So it would have been fantastic either way. Um, it doesn't matter who won the match, but I a part of me felt like, damn, I wish Yuka won this match because she was she was totally awesome in my opinion. Yeah. No, I was... one thing I want to see, although it would kind of like just go over everyone's heads in America, unfortunately, it would be whenever Yuka either wrestles in Japan or she ever has a match in Mexico. But really... Take advantage of your last name and show up in Yuri Sakasaki cosplay. And before you do the match, do the oops and, and start. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, the thing is that she really gave a, a challenge towards Athena. Because, you know, Athena, she's a great wrestler, but she, she's like the... Oh, I forgot the name of that term. Like, like she always fights versus um, what they call jobbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, squash. Yes, yeah, yeah, squash right. matches. He gave a, 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 a challenge to, you know, against um, Athena. Like, Athena got, you know, hurt really bad, you know, in this match. So, you know, got to give credit on that one. Well, Athena, a uh, fun, fun little thing was I almost met Athena because she was at WrestleCon, but I was kind of short on fun, so I was trying to stretch it out. I wanted to meet Athena uh, so bad, but, like, it was so – it was – like like the line for her was really long. <laughs> I imagine. And then uh, what was so funny is next to her was the major major wrestling figure table, which is where you know Brian Myers and um, uh, Matt Cardona's because they were selling stuff. And then all of a sudden, this was on the second day, and uh, Orange Cassidy was there because he wasn't scheduled to be there. And this lady, I was waiting, I was looking at the line, and I walk, walk by, and I see Orange Cassidy. I'm like, oh, shit, is that Orange Cassidy? And uh, this lady said, oh, my God, I'm such a huge fan of yours. Could I get a photo? He's like, $100. And I'm like, what, 100 bitch? <laughs> Red Heart is worth $100. Yeah, I'm like, I, I wanted to be like, bitch, 
Your sunglasses aren't worth a hundred dollars. <laughs> Hell, man, I'm surprised. Well, luckily it didn't cost that much when we saw him. But the funny thing is, we met him a couple years ago, and it was Johnny, Nian, Avarice, and Avarice's uh, dude there. So um, it was funny because you know we all got there. I per- we didn't, no, we didn't have autographs. We we went there for the photo. And we were trying to get around him, but it was like, you know, he's behind the booth, but he's like, eh, you know, he'll he'll get up and pose with us instead. It's easier, you know? But he's like, oh, man, I got to get up and everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, he really is like that, too. Still, you know? And yeah. it's funny, because that was the thing. We all, we all got to pose with him doing the <laughs> thing, you know? I always want to imagine visually that Orange Cassidy behind the scenes, behind the cameras, has a really goofy voice. Yeah, I would love to or hear that. He'd be like, he'd be like, all yeah. chill, and they takes off the glasses and backside. They go, thank the highs. That was a lot of fun. And like, oh my god, what the fuck? dude? That almost sounds like fucking fine time. Wasn't a fun time, Freddy man. Like, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to tell us a story now? You guys gonna get some tacos? I want to go. I'd be like, oh my god. And then he gets, it's like, hey, 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 Trevor, you're on camera. Oh shit. <clears throat> Hey guys. There's <laughs> <laughs> my friend Dan Housen over here. <laughs> well, Dan Housen just kind of sounds the same. He, Dan Housen, I've heard him on off character. He he literally just sounds like he sounds like a little higher pitched me. Like our voices, he's just like, Yeah, so you know, I just go around and that's about it. Yeah, that's like that's how he talks. It's like, oh. One of these days we're gonna have like we're gonna have we're gonna interview Dan Housen, but it's really you with the camera off. We'll just say that he has <laughs> technical difficulties. Don't give away the it. don't give away the secrets. Mm-hmm. There are children watching. It's still real, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> King Fame is alive. Okay, so, 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 so now we jinx ourselves. If we ever do get Dan Housen in an interview, which will probably cost like five hundred bucks or something, we have to have the camera on to confirm it's actually him and not Jack, you know. <laughs> no, you put up a, a picture. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Mm. All right, so next we had, uh, well, for this one, we all went for Athena again, so we're all tied with that one. I forgot, did William, did Jordy go, William? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, all of us went for Athena, the Fallen Goddess. So the next one we got was one of the bigger matches here. We had Samoa Joe defending his, yep, Ring of Honor World TV Championship against Mark Briscoe. And uh, what can I say? It was ahead of a match. It was uh, pretty intense. Um, I forgot. Was there color in the match? Did they did uh one? No. Okay. I remember there was one match that I wasn't expecting that there was blood, but I forgot which one it was. But anyways, um, the thing that surprised me was that at the end, Samoa Joe did actually make uh, you know, actually got Mark to uh, pass out to like tap out of submission hold. That was pretty intense there. I was expecting, I don't know, some big knockout move and everything. I did figure it was it was too soon to have Briscoe win. But, you know, lots of close calls, lots of things there. Everyone was cheering and everything. And, yeah, it was a pretty good match. It was one of the, one of the more action-packed ones of the night. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty hefty match. Like you said, a lot of close calls. Um, good God, too many to count. Uh, I was really, I was genuinely surprised that Samoa Joe didn't, like, knock him out and then get a pin. Like, it was weird seeing him finish him off with a submission. I, like, that that was the odd part about it. But overall, it was still a good, you know, it was a good match. Just two big guys beating the hell out of each other. I could dig it. It was good. Hmm. Well, with the history of uh, Mark and uh, Joe, Mark has never been able to beat Joe in singles competition um, ever. So uh, Mm. they they um, the last time they fought, weirdly enough, was for the world television champion. This was years ago. And uh, Mark uh, some uh, Joe beat him. Um, But. um, I was I, this was one of those matches I was really hoping Mark would win, but I had a feeling like like you said, Mark, <laughs> like you said, um, it, it's too soon. Um, but the one thing that I think like I love this match, it was so hard hitting, um, you know, they know each other so damn well. That's the thing. They've known each other for literally 20 years. Um, so it was 
really cool to see them get to fight each other. And the one thing that Mark has done with this match, in my mind, is he's actually cemented that, yes, he is. It's not that he won it, but he's capable of winning a major title, which is great because he had to prove he had to do that. He had to step up and prove that, you know, it's not just he's not a Genetti. He's him and him and Jay were equals. They were always mm-hmm. equals. And and the thing is, um, he even said in a press conference uh, two things, which really kind of tugged at my heartstrings. And he said, uh, they said, how are you doing since this is your first Ring of Honor pay-per-view since Jay's gone? And he said, um, I had a great, I had, uh, Jay's having a better night than me. I got to wrestle Samoa Joe, but he's wrestling Eddie Guerrero. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. But the other thing he said was, um, he said, um, to make it 100% clear, he said, I'm never, ever going to ever tag team wrestle where it's me and one person versus anyone else. Because he's like, I'll never do that. The most I will ever do is like a three-man tag. But he said he will never do uh, him and a partner. Because he said, the only partner I had or will ever have is Jay and no one else. So he did say that. The most he will ever wrestle is like multi-man or singles and that's it. And I'm like, at least he confirmed that. And like I said... (laughs) Yeah. So he, he, he did confirm that. And like I said, he did cement that he has the capabilities of being a single star. Jay, a lot of people forget Jay Briscoe was the Ring of Honor world champion. And weirdly enough, the guy he beat was Joe. So it is kind of funny that that ended up happening where they ended up fighting. So it's kind of like a redemption thing almost in a weird way. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm hoping to see what going to happen on the travels with mark i'm really curious and i'm happy that you know i'm happy that joe actually made him submit my favorite part was at the very end where you know joe and him shook hands because how often do you ever actually see joe shake anyone's hand in the ring it's very rare you ever see that so i think it's like him and like punk when they wrestle back in ring of honor i think that's about it like maybe one other person uh it was it was a great match i enjoyed it um, I, I enjoyed that. There was, it was the second of the three I was looking forward to the ma- most. So, I I did like this match. Um, well, one thing I want to say is I'm glad it wasn't like like overly bloody or you know none of that stuff. You know, just a nice, good, just a nice, normal match. I'm down with that. I like the way I like the good sportsmanship, you know, like at the end, because it actually felt like that's how what Ring of Honor is supposed to be all about. When he went over there and he actually shook his hand, I really, really did enjoy seeing Joe do that, you know, because Joe is Joe. And, you know, just wouldn't expect that from Joe in a general sense. I mean, even though I don't have much experience with Ring of Honor like all of you guys do, that's just not something I would expect out of Joe in a, on a, in a general sense. So I really enjoyed that. I like how Mark was saying, you know, we went over and hugged his family and all that other stuff. I know I should be talking about the match, but it's stuff outside of the match that was enjoying. I enjoyed a lot more. It just felt so nice and wholesome. And that probably sounds weird to say in a wrestling match for wrestling. But I, I think I enjoyed that more than the match itself. It just felt very, I don't know. It just like, it just makes you wish that his brother was there, you know? But you could, yeah. you could feel the you could feel the love of the wrestling community, like with this whole situation and like supporting Mark and also, you know, I mean they are Ring of Honor. They're they're both in the Ring of Honor Hall of Fame, so it's literally like you know it is cool. Yes, yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. You 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 can really feel feel all of that and I think it was it was like exuding through the screens for the uh, audiences at home to feel too so yeah that's what I really enjoyed about the match and like the fact that Joe showed that, that respect too 
So, yeah. Now, how this is going to affect them in the future, you know, if, if Mark's going to challenge him again, because, like, I didn't know what you just, what you were just saying, that um, apparently Mark has never been able to beat Joe in a single, in, you know, in a, in a single situation. So, I wonder if he's going to challenge him again, you know, sometime down the road, since they had, do have that history, like they were pretty much, you know, showing. So, I look forward to seeing that again. I mean, seeing them go at it again. I think they put on a really good show. All right, Johnny. I turn it over to you. Yeah, I like the match. I don't. I don't really remember too much about the match right now. But um, you know, it was an emotional match because we already, you know, we all know what happened. You know, with Mark sub. Uh, not so personal life, you know, that tragedy. So um, just to see that he was still able to fight and give his all. And, you know, despite the fact that he lost the match, you know, just the whole crowd supporting, you know, Mark and him hugging um, his family and all that. It's just like, it's very emotional. It's like, it always makes you, yeah, it kind of makes you kind of sad a little bit. Like, like, cause he's like, yeah, going through a lot of stuff. Like, it takes a lot of courage to go through something as bad as what he has gone through and still be able to fight this match and, and still do a good job at it. So I saw more like that aspect of the match than the actual match. I don't know, that's, that's just the way I felt it, you know. <laughs> it was an overall good match, and I like the, you know... They're good wrestlers, and yeah, it was cool. All right, so who? How did this one? How did this one go? Did William already go? I kind of forgot. Yeah, I already went. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, that one we all went for Samoa Joe because we all felt, you know, again, too soon to have uh, dropped the title, but um, yeah, we all went for him. So the next one, yeah, it's a pretty cool match here. Kind of surprising here. It was uh, Daniel Garcia defending the Ring of Honor title against Hiroshi Tanahashi. And I'm surprised Daniel Garcia actually went out like completely on his own. Well, it wasn't you know? It what? wasn't for a title. It wasn't for a title. It wasn't? I thought it was for the pure championship. Oh, no, that, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that, that, was yeah, match. that was the next one. Okay, yeah, yeah. My yeah. God, I don't respect. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> well, also, it was supposed to be, uh, before you get into it, it was actually supposed to be Will Ospreay, but the injury he suffered at uh, New Japan Cup, they pulled him from that, and they also pulled him from the uh, uh, multiverse um, match. So, okay. he, well, I'll I'll mention that then. Hold on. Okay. All right. So the next match we had here was Daniel Garcia going up against Hiroshi Tanahashi, and I just found out that uh, originally it was supposed to be Will Ospreay. Wouldn't that be something? But, uh, but yeah, he got injured, I believe. So that's why he was not here. And he was also not in the multiverse event. And, um, yeah, I'm surprised Daniel Garcia actually came out alone with no JAS people with him or not even like the whole, you know, I, I just got to say it I love saying it. The Jericho Appreciation Society, the epitome of sports entertainment. But, um, uh, I didn't even know he even had his own thing. I'm like, holy shit, he has his own thing. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, that but, was funny. That was funny. Your reaction to that. That was funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't I was like doing whatever. I just looked up. Well, that's Daniel Garcia, that's his thing, you know. But anyway, yeah, it's a good match. Good back and forth. Lots of, you know. Um he actually gave a gave a run for his money to Hiroshi. Um that's like a good ten to twelve minutes of fighting there, and it was, you know, a pretty intense match there. Um Daniel still has like the whole chip on his so shoulder. So he still had that kind of thing where he lost and he's all pissy and won't shake his hand like, you know, officially or whatever after he lost a match. But um, I don't remember terribly too much. It's been a while. I remember that Tanahashi did, uh, you know, he did, he did a good job. I I think at the beginning, wasn't like Daniel taunting him or something? Wasn't Tanahashi doing his, you know, stuff? I remember, yeah, because then he appeared with, like, all the streamers and junk, and Daniel Garcia was just in the corner, kind of like, eh, this clown or whatever, and he was kind of poking fun of them or something during the beginning. Yep. You know, that that kind of feeling each other phase of the match and everything. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then, you know, she won pretty good match. It's just, you know, a lot happened this week to make me kind of forget a bit, <laughs> but it was a pretty good match there. You 
know what makes Danny J's nipples hot? No, I'm just kidding. I'm playing. I'm playing. Oh <laughs> I'm, playing. I'm sorry. I had to get Will Will to laugh. But no, oh and legitimately, it was awesome seeing Tanahashi wrestle because he wasn't planned. Um, and Tana, I I know Tana is so is so straight aced about literally aced about uh he's the kind of guy who you just call up and go like hey um there's supposed to be a match would you mind covering he's like okay <laughs> and so so I, I'm happy that even though it was like kind of an impromptu match that he and it was so funny because he literally that night uh the night prior he was at multiverse and he was just like okay i guess i'll do it because i was confused why he left because i can't i met him at it was so funny i met him at wrestlecon at 10 in the morning and then they go oh he's leaving at noon and then as soon as he left i was like wait he's only been here for two hours and they said oh he has to go to an event and i didn't know what the event was i was like oh okay and then it was just kind of random. And then I went in line with Mark Briscoe and they said, oh yeah, he's going to be leaving in a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. And it, the, the dots didn't connect to me. <laughs> um, but no, I was happy with the match. Um, I I do find it funny that, that Garcia lost to literally the returning Adam Cole and Tanahashi back to back. Because now I'm like, I don't know if it's a matter of, oh, they're testing Garcia or if they're just like, Garcia is the new jobber. Because I'm like, wow, are all of JAS now just jobbers except Sammy? It seems like that. Or am I just, maybe I might be reading too much into it. But I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good match, even though there wasn't really much buildup because they, they really didn't know what to do. But it was it was good for what it was. Yeah, that was actually a surprising good match for an impromptu match. Um, like, yeah, I gotta give props to Tanahashi. That guy can, he can work his butt off. Like, you could literally just go, hey, we need you to come up with a match in like eh, 10 seconds. He's like, dude, I'm on it. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous how quick and on the fly that he can, you, you know, do this and then pull off such good matches. It's insane. Um, it was definitely a fun match. Went by pretty quick, but again, was impromptu. So can't really be too mad about that. But yeah, it was still a good match. Well, with that um, history behind there, now, you know, the story behind it, that really explains the style of this match, too. But like you're saying, it's, you know, you, uh, maybe the JAS are just becoming the Jobber Association or something. I mean, I don't know. This the Jobber Appreciation Society. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't notice that pattern until you brought it up. <laughs> it all started with Jericho being split into submission. <laughs> it should no, just be but... called Jabs now because it's Job Anybody But Sammy. That's what it's turning into now. No, but like I said, the match itself was okay. And one thing I do like with AEW, I kind of like seeing the Japanese wrestlers or the New Japan wrestlers pop up because, like I said, when I was in Japan and I had the chance to watch New Japan on a semi-regular basis because of the way my work schedule was and my um, one of my <laughs> – he actually set up my TV to – watch stuff um he set up my tv to watch all that stuff but the problem was that i never had much of an opportunity to just sit down and just watch it was like every once in a while i would sit down and watch some new japan stuff and um what was the other one it was all japan yeah there's all japan there's pro wrestling noah uh ddt ddt uh, yeah is it was DDT is weird. <laughs> One thing I do want to say real, real quick is I actually own uh, Fire Pro Wrestling World, and that's something we could probably, uh, maybe me and Johnny can play a bit. When you can also play, it's, it's easy to kind of pick up and play. You don't have to be, because it's more technical. It's not button mashy. Like yeah, you, you, have to, you have to really figure out how to work the mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, sorry, not, it's not like, like button mashy, break the controller, you know. But anyways, um, the match had the latest game had a bunch of New Japan Pro Wrestling people that I didn't know that much because this was before all these guys started coming over here and the Forbidden Door and all that. But now that they have, now I can look back at the roster and now I can say 
Um, <clears throat> well, obviously, I already know who Kenny Omega was, Zack Sabre Jr., <laughs> uh, Kota Ibushi, and all that. But now I know Dude, I, that uh, uh, Juice Robinson is in there. Minoru Suzuki is in there. Next time I play, I want to pick him. Now that I know who he is. Kimoru mm-hmm. Takahashi's in there. Uh, Tama Tonga's in there. Tetsu- Jay White's Tetsuya in there. Naito. White's in there. Yeah. Even they even have an expansion of Stardom. Too. Yeah, I I bought them all, and uh, you know, may she rest in peace. Hana was also in one of them. Mother. Yeah, Hana Kimura was in one. Yeah. Also, was... B Priestley, and all them. Yep. B Priestley I... and Jamie Hader are both in it. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. I gotta yeah. Whenever Johnny's here, we'll play it. A bit. Oh, we didn't even review that game. That'd be cool to review. But anyways, um, yeah. Okay, like I was saying, like when I was in Japan, I had well the two that I was actually going between at that time was all Japan and New Japan. And like I said, I had the opportunity to actually go to a New Japan show, but I was so so exhausted and tired. I just didn't feel like taking like the two or three train. Well, the bus and the two or three trains I would have had to take to get to the arena to actually see the show. So I just opted out. And Jericho would have been there too for that. But I was tired. Oh. But yeah, I didn't. So, like I said, I'm glad seeing AEW, especially the actual Japanese wrestlers. I'm saying, oh, wow, this is so awesome. And I, it's like I like their kind of like their style and how they're how easily they adapt their style to here. And, this, and that impromptu match is just a highlight of that to me. And I really did enjoy that. Right. Oh, How about and you, actually, on a uh, on an odd oh. side note, there are actually New Japan Pro and Bullet Club members that are in an anime series. Yep, uh, there's a series known as Tiger Mask, and in a few of the episodes, uh, Tunga, Kenny Omega, and Okada all show up. Yep. Oh, Jesus. Did I just yeah. about that? <laughs> It was a, no, this was uh, about what was it like three years ago, four years no, ago? No, 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 just Tiger Mask in general. I just read something with Tiger Mask. Wow. Yeah, yeah, the show's called Tiger Mask W. It's a great show. Wow, I'm just all these weird coincidences. It's a sign. <laughs> now, are the rest of the shows are still voiced by the actual wrestlers? Because you know, the, um, Kenny Omega speaks Japanese as well, right? I wish they were. Uh, the only one who voices himself is uh. Togi Makabe, but um, the rest of them, no, unfortunately. I wish they did. But they never dubbed it, which is weird. They only have it in subtitles. But it, it's it's still a great show. It's fa- it's a fantastic... If you if you love wrestling and you love anime, it's literally like the perfect show for you. Yeah. Hmm. What's it called again? Maybe I could find it somewhere. Uh, Tiger, Tiger Mask. Mask. Uh, Tiger Mask W. W. Okay. Like, and it's funny because it's kind of a sequel to it, it. Little side note. So, um, you guys know who Jushin Thunder Liger is, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, ne- you don't know who Jushin Thunder Liger is, Wendy? Mm-mm. Oh, he's a legend. He's like a legend of beyond legend of uh, mass wrestlers. Wasn't he on WCW back in the day? WCW back in the day. He was New Japan legend. He's, God, he's had so many feuds. Anyway, he, his character of the Jusha Thunder Liger actually was created as um, a character who was supposed to be a gimmick character to coincide with, a. it was a promotional character he had created for this anime series called Jushin Liger, which was about a kid and a group of people who become like a gauntlet and he turns into this car- this giant like fire superhero and he called himself Jushin Liger. And that's where they came up with the concept. But Jushin Thunder Liger was such a good wrestler that they just like, fuck the gimmick. He's the gimmick. And then the, the, what's funny is the same thing happened to Tiger Mask, the original Tiger Mask from the 70s. He was created as a gimmick to promote an anime series called Tiger Mask about a man who is a, a masked wrestler, a vigilante, and he would beat villains by using his, ma- like wearing his mask. And he had an evil doppelganger named Black Tiger. And and it, what's so funny is the original Black Tiger was Eddie Guerrero, fun fact. Yep. Um, so they he, he then, it went from, oh, it's an anime series to... No, he's the gimmick. 
But what's so funny is this new series is kind of a sequel to the original. So it's kind of funny. So like the main, the big, big bad is the same big, big bad from the original. But it doesn't really, you don't have to see the original to watch it. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of a fun little tidbit. Oh, and one more weird tie-in as far as that. The uh, the whole Black Tiger ordeal. Now, if you remember, Black Tiger in the anime series had a nemesis by the name of Wild Pegasus. Wild mm-hmm. Pegasus in real life was Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit. Oh, nice. That is an, that is an interesting connection there. Hi, lady. That seems familiar to me now. That whole setup. But never mind. Uh, go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Well, uh, but it was so interesting um, info. Interesting how um, anime and wrestling join forces. Um, okay, so in terms of this match, um, yeah, you can tell that. Ooh, you know, Tiger Mask W is on Crunchyroll. We have to check that out. Yep. Sorry. Okay, so on this match, you can tell that Hiroshi um, Tanahashi is very talented. He's a very good wrestler, um, very good and technical and all that kind of stuff. But I actually liked, um, despite the fact that Daniel Garcia, I guess, is starting to be a bit of a jobber, um, I do like the way he fights, and I like his how healed is he is throughout the whole match. Like he's always like taunting his opponent. He's always like kind of like, Pushing him to the side, he's just like really, really going at it with that gimmick. And he actually he is a good wrestler. I just don't know why AEW doesn't really, uh, I don't know, AEW slash Ring of Honor. They don't really give the push they should give to Daniel Garcia because I do think that if they change it up a little bit, I think he can actually, you know, be one of the wrestlers you know that that's more like a little bit more mainstream you know and that's so like oh daniel garcia who's daniel garcia or it's, oh, whatever. like he's just like he's kind of like whatever at the time being so but i do like the match and um i forgot how he lost the match but uh yeah there were moments i was like oh man, he could have still won this match but oh he, he lost by a pinball by a pin Wow. But yeah, it was, so, it was so good match. Mm. Now, this match here wasn't, I, I, I guess it was one of those matches that was announced after the fact, so none of us voted for that one. 